play on what it's like. 1948 Pontiac Streamliner Silver Streak. This could possibly be the very first car to offer a rear window, I'm sorry, rear backlight wiper. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like. This channel, we feature the classics, vintage, some exotics, lots of orphan cars, and cars that tend to get lost in the strainer, period ads, specs, button switches, and knobs, and do the full tour. We show what these cars were like. If that sounds like a channel that you will totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. 1948 Pontiac was offered in two models or lines, the Torpedo, which rode a 119-inch wheelbase, and the Streamliner, which rode a 122-inch wheelbase. Pontiac offered the Streamliner from 1932 to 1952, built on the GM B-body platform, along such cars as the Oldsmobile Series 60, Buick Special, and the Cadillac Series 61. 1948 Streamliner could be had in two trim levels, the regular trim level or the deluxe, which the deluxe was called Silver Streak. Offered as a two-door sedan, four-door sedan, or four-door wagon, the Pontiac Streamliner competed with Mercury, DeSoto. Buyers could also cross shop the Oldsmobile, Dodge, Studebaker Commander, Hudson Commodore was just a little bit more expensive, designed by Duke, 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 Harley Earl. Let's compare the two, 47 and 48. 47 on top, 48 on the bottom, starting in the front. More or less a warmed over body design that dates back before the war. Here's a look at the 42. Actually, let's do this a little different this time because this design very minimally changed from 42 to 48, 42 being the first year, 48 being the last year. Plus, somebody in the comment section on the 1949 Chevy said, I didn't know anything about anything that I was talking about. GM did more to the design than just change the grill and the steering wheel. So let's, let's see how much of a difference there really is. 42 on top, 48 on the bottom, starting in the front. 42 has an exterior sun visor, which makes it look different, but that was an option on the 48 as well. The grills are totally different, but the overall shape is the same. Bumpers are different. Bright work is slightly different. There's more chrome moldings on the 42 on the hood section than the 48. Moving to the side profile, you can definitely tell that they are virtually the same. The only difference being on the 42, it has more moldings. 48 has bigger gravel guards and full wheel discs, whereas on the 42, it has the dog dish hubcap style wheels. Moving to the rear and the rear quarter section, different bumpers and taillights. Silver streak trim is slightly different. Moving inside, now just take a look at how similar everything is. The instrument panel uses the same speedometer, but the gauges on the 42 are round as opposed to rectangular on the 48. The steering wheels have been revised. Radios are ever so slightly different. So after looking at both of those side by side, I think we can concur the 42 and the 48 are pretty much the same with just slight differences. With that said, which one do you like better in the comment section below? Moving on to specs, 210.25 inches long, 76.7 inches wide. It rides a wheelbase of 122 inches. It weighs 3,540 pounds. Price, $2,490 which is equivalent to you spending $30,664.92 in the year 2023. Total 1948 Pontiac production was 235,419 units. Total Streamliner was 160,857 units. Moving on to engines. Pontiac had two engines on offer, 239.2 cubic inch displacement flathead in line six, 3.9 liters. It's good for 90 horsepower, 3,400 RPM with a bore of 3.6 inches and a stroke of four inches. Compression six and a half to one, four main bearings when mated to a three speed manual transmission. Zero to 60 could be had in 21.9 seconds. Theoretical top speed, 75 miles per hour. Average fuel economy, 13 miles to the gallon. Moving on to the bigger of the two engines, 248.9 cubic inch displacement, flathead in line eight, 4.1 liters. It's good for 104 brake horsepower at 3,800 RPM. 
bore of 3.3 inches and a stroke of 3.8 inches. Compression, 6.5 to 1 with 5 main bearings. When mated to a 3-speed manual transmission, 0 to 60 could be had in 18.6 seconds, a drastic improvement over the 6-cylinder. Theoretical top speed, 78 miles per hour, while achieving the same MPG rating of 13 miles to the gallon average. Moving on to transmissions, two transmissions on offer, three-speed manual, which was a column shift unit that was standard, or buyers could opt and get the Hydromatic Automatic, which is technically a four-speed transmission with a super short first gear. The original Hydromatic was introduced in 1939 for the 1940 model year, and it is the first fully automatic transmission to be mass produced. 1948 was the very first year it was optional in all Pontiacs, and it was in 70% of them made that year. Let's talk styling. So there's a lot going on with this car. Let's start with the center streaks. Notice it's kind of like trialed out here. This is a little bit more protruded than the sides are. It comes down here towards the Indian Chief head. Right here, kind of looks like a goat with these being the horns, but it's not. It's an Indian Chief head. And you could definitely see it right there. It almost looks like Crazy Horse. Look at the red reflectors coming off of it from top down looks like a trident doesn't it coming over here the fenders sit down lower than the hood does the hood is very pronounced bulge section up there check out these chrome pieces or stainless bright work coming towards here and then it has like this fin that see how it's elevated and it gets higher as it comes out towards the headlight the bumpers this is a totally different piece connected by this part right there and it wraps around to the overrider and then it comes back down turn signals or running lights I think these are fog lights look at Pontiac stamped into chrome there lots of chrome on this car I love the two-toneness the color separation silver streak check out the fender design how it comes down and then tapers into the body like look at this line I love how this isn't straight the doors are cut into it gravel guards fender bulge as it comes out the back here this car has a drip rail that goes the whole way look at this design how it slopes back these lines are continued from the hood but on the trunk section coming down to the Pontiac logo which is lit up by this light as well as the uh, it's license plate bracket also says Pontiac that would be a really cool sight to see at night I don't know if that's a backup light because the brake lights are here interesting check out the bumpers how they wrap around just like in the front, totally different piece. It's only connected to here and it goes to the overrider and down. Here's how the uh, mirrors are mounted. Look at all of the bright work. There's a lot of chrome on this car. Look how it all comes back down. 
I love this line here, how it comes to the back. While we're back here, let's get in the trunk. So there is, you can lock the trunk if you want to. So there's the keyhole cover. And to get in, just an opener. Trunk is heavy. It's got a nice catch. Full size bias ply spare with bumper jack. That is a really nice trunk. Also look, the load area is really low. It only comes up to my knee. So if you're carrying stuff, put it right inside there. No fuss. This one has a rear window wiper. How cool is that? Fuel door is on the driver's side and it's way down inside there. Getting inside, notice there is a key on the driver's side and that's really rare because back in the day, it was, I always thought that it was uh, against the law to lock, not lock, but you know, exit your car on the driver's side. There's a lot going on with this door. Notice it's two-tone color for starters. Second, when I open it, just check out the door design and look at how it operates. Like, there's a lot of engineering that had to go into that to get it to work right. So this is what the door, driver's side door looks like armrest as well as door handle to pull the door shut this is the door handle to get out this is the window crank for the big window and it operates like that this is a crank operated vent window but you have to unlock it first and that pin does that and it works like that that is a big vent window coming down inside the pedal box down here this is the handbrake Emergency brake, parking brake, whatever you want to call it. That's what it does. Headlights. That pops the hood. We'll get under the hood shortly. Down inside the pedal box. High beam switch on the floor where it should be in my opinion. Brake pedal, gas pedal. This is an automatic. Take a look at this interior. Nice quality shut. Here's what over the hood looks like. Here's what first person over the hood looks like. I absolutely love this steering wheel. It's like ivory, almost uh, almost like a bone color. It's gorgeous and it feels, it feels right in your hands. Chrome horn ring goes the whole way around the steering wheel. It's a massive steering wheel underneath the steering wheel and the only reason i show this is because everybody's different everybody's built different and if you don't fit in the car you can't drive it i wear size 34 pants there is probably a good inch or two between my lap and the steering wheel and another reason i show this is because most of the time these seats aren't adjustable and neither is the steering wheel the steering wheel doesn't telescope or tilt or any on of that. to the button switches and knobs starting on the left and moving right amp meter gasoline gauge speedometer with odometer inside of it oil pressure coolant temperature headlights starter button check out this shot you can see the hydromatic drive Drive modes read, neutral, drive, low, reverse. Knob at the top is for the windshield wipers. Radio, key, lighter, fog lights, cal vent, ashtray, heater and ventilation controls, air, defrost, and temperature. Up above, sun visors. They're actually pretty big. There's my hand for reference. Rear view mirror there. Another sun visor over here for the passenger. On to the glove box test. There is our test subject. Here is my hand for reference. Here is our glove box in question. And notice the clock. Look at how huge that clock is. It's mounted on the glove box door. Man, look at that. It's huge. That thing looks like a bread box. Absolutely insane. There's my camera inside that glove box. It's, it's so big that I could put both cameras 
inside the glove box like that. And look, it fits and it shuts. Getting into the rear, before we do, check out all of the, uh, it's textured. The door handle is very textured. The door isn't straight and it's all framed out. Check out the frame. Look, it's kind of sort of cupped. You see how it's, the door isn't straight. Notice there isn't an armrest. It's made of a cloth material, the door panel is. Door handle to get out. Window crank for the big window and it operates like that. Goes completely down. Take a look inside. Lots of space. That's a uh, fender skirt. If you wanted to put the fender skirt on later, you could. Here's what front from the back looks like. Let's take a gander at the greenhouse. Nice big rear shelf back there. That's what visibility looks like out the back window from the back seat. There is tons of space in this car. Feels like I'm in a Mopar product. Here is how much space I have between my knee and the back of the seat. It's from my forearm to my fingertip. That's probably about a foot of space. This is a rope. You could either hold on to it, but it's for a lap blanket because the heating situations weren't that great in these cars. So the people in the back generally froze to death as they drove down the road. Because you gotta think the heater is up there and the only way the heat gets to the back back here is it blows from the floor and heat rises. So the thought process was that'd be fine. We'll shoot it down from the floor. It'll rise up and keep you warm. Ashtray, it operates like that. Dome light in the center. Creature comforts. Here is a rope to hold on to. Grab handle. Arm rest to rest your arm on. Ashtray is right there, which we already said. Only one ashtray. Everything found on the driver's side is also on the passenger side. Arm rest, grab handle. There isn't a coat hook. Coming to the under the hood section, we already popped the hood from the inside. So getting under the hood, there is another catch and it's right, right there. You can just pick it up. The hood is relatively heavy. Unfortunately, that's all the higher the hood goes. Beautiful Pontiac straight eight there under the hood. Look at that long slender battery right there coil is right there on the firewall as well as the horn generator down inside there it looks like a two barrel carburetor or it could be a big single oil bath air cleaner of course with another horn on the back side of it On to the pros and cons. On the positive side, despite minimal changes to a pre-war body design, still looks stellar. Spacious interior, especially in the rear. Silver streak looks amazing now. Hood release inside. Huge glove box to the point where both cameras fit inside of it, and I could have probably put the iPad in there too if I had it. Built solid with quality materials. Among GM's nicer looking mid-40s cars. On the cons, lack of appeal of concurrent Chevys, indifferent performance, high maintenance on Woody Wagons. All right, now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to give me both the name of the band and song title. First person to do so correctly will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. Don't have Facebook? Shoot me an email if you want to talk one-on-one -on -one with me. All of that will be in the description. Thank you all so much for all of the continued support and thank you so much for coming out and watching this. And until next time, here are some scenes for our next episode 1940 DeSoto Custom Series 57C Convertible Coupe. This car was super stellar with an interesting hood opening procedure, which was very light. The hood was.
That episode is coming up Friday at 4.30 Eastern Standard Time, but there will be an episode tomorrow at 4.30. I just don't have a preview for it. Until next time, toodaloo! Hopefully this doesn't get copyright blocked because I tried this once before and it got flagged. Sometimes late at night, I lie awake and watch her sleeping. Lost in peaceful dreams, so I turned out the light, wait there in the dark.